Hello everyone, Minky here with the next deck profile. Uh, today is the 16th of May, so it's actually been a while since I last recorded. It might have been about a month actually since I last recorded, I think. And uh, yesterday, my last deck profile went up. Well, yesterday, as of recording, my last deck profile went up. So I've got to record some more before you know I miss a day. <laughs> you know, and um, so I've got about three decks that I'm thinking of doing at the moment. Uh, it, it was originally three, then I went and I decided to not do those three, and then I had got two different decks, and then uh, I figured maybe there's another deck I might want to do as well, so I might show that off, maybe, and I've got like an idea. Although that deck's small, so you know. Anyway, we'll see them as we get along, so uh, obviously I'll record this deck profile today, and then the next deck profile, and then we'll see kind of what happens with that third one. Uh, anyway, f for this deck, uh, it is the warrior deck, as you can tell, and so let's start with the boss monsters. So we have uh, two boss monsters for this one. Uh, the first one is uh, Knight of the Red Lotus. If you have exactly three normal monsters in your graveyard, you can smash summon this card from your hand by removing from play two normal monsters from your graveyard. So you can't exactly just bring out all three at once, you've got to kind of sort your grave out a little bit. Well, assuming you have multiple, you know, more than, you know, more than one. Um, it's also got a leggy band in him, but it's a bit messy, so I should probably see about fixing that. I thought it was a bit weird. Um, once per turn, you can select and special on one level 4 or lower normal monsters from your graveyard. So he's pretty good for a normal level 4 below deck or whatever, you know, like, like my restriction decks before, you know, how I was saying how, like, um, you know, uh, you know, like um, have got restriction decks and whatnot. Maybe there's gonna be, there's probably, uh, there is gonna be a level one normal deck at least, um, as well as level one with so attack and a level one normal so defense and so on and so forth. Uh, point is, this guy would be good in those decks, but obviously he is questionably supportive. So obviously, you know, so there's that. And then the other boss monster of this deck is. Light Ray at Gearfield, or Ge Gearfried, my apologies. Like, he, he, they keep swapping the names, it's a bit weird, but this guy's pretty cool, I think. Uh, you know, and so uh, let's go for over his effects then. Can I be normal summoned a set? Must be special summoned from your hand by having five or more light monsters with different names in your graveyard. I cannot be special summoned by other ways. Once per turn, during every place per turn, when a spell or trap card is activated, you can banish one more attack monster from your graveyard, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. All facing monsters you control must be warrior type to activate and to resolve this effect. So obviously this is a warrior deck, so this is obviously any time when it says you must have a warrior in your graveyard, or you can banish a warrior, or you have to have all only warriors on your side of the field, neither of that really means anything in this deck, because they're all warriors anyway. Obviously you probably can do some shenanigans with your monsters, but Point is, you know, obviously, without your opponent's shenanigans, you know, banishing warriors from your graveyard means banishing anything from your, any monster from your graveyard. Controlling only warrior type monsters means nothing, really, because this guy's a warrior anyway. Uh, but obviously, if you control other monsters, they need to be warrior, but they're all warriors anyway, so, you know, it's, it's all good. Uh, yeah. Alright, time for the normal monsters. Uh, and we've only well we've only got two normal monsters meaning we can't actually summon the boss monster at the moment although I think I think I had three because I, but I think I took one out because it's uh because as you can tell this deck's kind of like rarity it, it's not in uh, sleeves that's it and I need to get sleeves for it which hopefully I'll manage to do soon but point is uh, it's, it's not in sleeves so I've obviously had to take a few cards out uh, to because I want to make sure I actually protect them now so. Uh, anyway, the first dark, mo uh, the first normal monster is Dark Blade. <laughs> uh, warrior type monster with 800 attack and 800 defense. I know he's got a fusion monster, but I think that requires a dragon type monster. So obviously, it's not exactly the most wanted uh, monster in this deck. But obviously, I've gone with Dark Blade because he's a powerful normal warrior type monster, and I need you know normal monsters for the deck for the first boss monster, the Red Lotus monster. So there you go. And finally, uh, we have Toon Warrior. Uh, level level three with 600 attack, so not too bad. 
and he's a tuner, so you know there you go. He's got he's there for tuner plays, so you know he's pretty nice. All right, time for the effect monsters. First off, we are starting with now. Bear in mind, this deck is just warrior type theme. That's really all it is. It's probably one of the earlier decks that I properly built. So therefore, if it seems very out of touch with the uh, with the meta or whatever, obviously for one, it was done a few years ago. So think back to that meta. But if it, but if it's out of touch with that meta, yeah. I'm, like I said before, I'm not the most competitive player out there. I'm nowhere near that level. So if it seems like a bad deck, it's not meant to be good, if you will, it's just meant to be for fun, if anything, so, you know, just take that as you will. Anyway, so we have Air Armor Ninja. When this card is summoned, you can target one ninja monster to control, reduce its level by one. So that's good for, like, Ixies players and maybe even Synchro players, but it's more so good for Ixies players, I think, especially with the other... Uh, not the other four, but especially with uh, Earth Armor Ninja in particular. Earth Armor Ninja being basically a Cyber Dragon like monster. It's level 5, and it can special summon itself if you control no monsters. Uh, and then if you summon this guy out, you can reduce his level, level to 4, and then it can summon the rank 4 right there. Uh, and, and they're both ninjas as well, so there you go. Uh, next, we have Amazonas Sage. At the start, at the end of the battle, at the end of the damage step, if this card attacked and is still on the field, target one spell trap card your opponent controls. Destroy that target. So basically, when it attacks, if it's finished attacking and it's still here, you get to MST something on the field. Uh, but it's only your opponent's card, so if you're the only one with cards, uh, then, well, I mean, you have to do it. So that's the downside to it, is that you have to do it. But it only has to be your opponent's card, so you don't have to worry about destroying your own stuff if you're not, if if it you would have had it forced to. Uh, next, we have two copies of Aqua Armor Ninja. When your opponent, uh, when your opponent wants to declare a direct attack, if you have another ninja monster in your graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard to target the attacking monster and get the attack. So basically, a very uh, very um, ninja card. Uh, requiring another ninja in the graveyard and basically blocks an attack. It just, it's just the one attack as well, so it's not the greatest, but it's something and it banishes as well, which I like banishing, so to a degree. Well, you know, banishing's kind of cool. Uh, next, we have a, a Battling Boxer Counter Punch. During the damage step, if of either player's turn, when a Battling Boxer monster controller is attacking or being attacked, you can banish this card from your hand or graveyard. That monster gains a thousand attack until the end of the until the end phase. You only use the effect of this card once per turn. So good for battling boxers and uh, guess what? They're all well as far as I'm aware, they're all warrior time monsters, so uh, you know have fun with that, you know, in this deck. And uh, by the way, uh, next one is a, another battling boxer monster. And this one being head geared. When this card is normal summoned, you can send one battle monster monster from your deck to the graveyard. Once per turn, this face type machine card can be shown in battle. So basically, foolish burial of battle boxer monster, and like, like the counter punch one I just showed uh, to get that boost. And also, um, once per turn, can't be shown in battle one attack. So also kind of defensively orientated as well. Next, we have uh, Spara. Uh, this card, if you control a battling box monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. If you do, you cannot conduct your battle phase for the rest of this turn. So, obviously that skips your battle phase, but it is an Inferno Reckless Summon target. So, there you go, you've got something there at least. And you've got your monster that protect from battle anyway, so it's not like it's a complete... Um, you know... It's not like... Some of them do activate during your opponent's turn, so it's not like... You know, a, a complete downside that uh, you've lost your battle phase. I mean, obviously, you kind of want to be able to attack anyway, but anyway, next up we have Battle Boxer Switch Shitter. Yeah, Switch Shitter. <laughs> With this card, this is normal summoned. You can target one Battling Box monster in your graveyard. It's best summon it. Uh, you can also summon any monsters during the turn you have to fit except Battling Box monsters. So, you know, obviously. Uh, you know, it locks into Battle of Boxing Monsters, but it's any Battle of Boxing Monsters, it doesn't have to be strictly Ixies, 
It could be through your hand or you know anything like that. So it's the battery box monster. All right, next up is Camera Clops. At the start of the damage step, this card attacks a face a monster on the field whose defense is higher than, face, than this card's attack. Destroy that target. So it does not matter what battle position your opponent's monster is in. It does not matter how much attack they have. All that matters, I think it's got to be face up, but that's it. It can't be face down. If it's face down, then it just goes through like normal. Uh, but if but if it's got more defense, it just dies uh, to this card's effect. So uh, you know you can attack a blue eyes with dragon, you know head strong or whatever you know in attack position, and blue eyes will die. You can target big shield garner um, in attack position or defense position, and big shield garner will just die. You know that kind of thing. So it's really nice. It's a really nice effect right there. Uh, next up, we have uh, DD Unicorn Knight. This card cannot be normal summoned or set. This card can only be here special summoned if your opponent controls a monster and you control a face up tuna monster or monsters. When this card is special summoned this way, you can set one. Uh, when this card is special summoned this way, but it can only be special summoned by this effect anyway, so. Uh, you can set one of your mutant play at level 3 or lower non tuna monsters as best summoned. Its effects are negated. You cannot normal summon or set the time you, you are special this card. So this does eat up your normal summon. Like, not even as a normal summon, but it does um, prevent you from normal summoning. Like, and setting. Like, completely. Uh, well, it says normal summon or set. I, I imagine it means normal set, but I'm, but I'm wondering if it means you can't set spell trap cards as well or whatever. Like, it's a blanket set, but I don't imagine it does. I imagine it means normal set. But... You know, and also it's written in a way where it's like, if you normal summon a monster, you can't special summon this card. I think that's the way it's implied as well. So, just bear that in mind. But it's nice, and it's not a Tuna as well, so you've got to be careful about that. You need to get a Tuna as well, supposedly. I think. Actually, no, wait, you have a Tuna anyway, so never mind. Anyway, next up, we have uh, two copies of Earth Armor Ninja. This is the card I mentioned before, how it's basically got a Sab Dragon effect, level 5. Summons itself if uh, the opponent controls much and you don't. So it's really nice. And uh, then you normal summon an Omni Ninja, get this guy to level 4, and then oh, look, you got X summon right there. Next, we have uh, Field Commando Raz. When this card is normal summoned or special summoned, select one level 4 or lower warrior time monster from your deck, except Field Commando Raz, and place it on top of your deck. So this is really nice because obviously this card searches any level four or lower monsters in your deck. Not, well, I mean, not just warriors. It is literally just warriors, but I mean it searches any level four or because you know. Uh, but also, this is good for stuff like monster slots, where it says. I remember monster slots. I'm pretty sure the effect of monster slots is target monster control, banish a monster with the same level as it from your graveyard, and then draw a card. If it's the same level monster, it's about summon it, something like that. So obviously, this sets that up. Uh, this also sets up, like you know, what you're gonna draw next, so you can kind of like do this, that, or the other, or something, you know, stuff like that. But you know, anyway. But yeah, it's a nice effect right there, I think. Next up, we have one copy of Flame Armor Ninja. Uh, when this card is summoned, you can target one face up with Ninja Monster Control, increase its level by one. So it's kind of like the opposite of Air Armor Ninja. Where in this case it actually increases the level by one instead. So you smash some of your Earth Armor Ninja, and then this guy will like, and you can normal summon this guy, and then increase his own level by one, making him level five for a rank five fixes monster instead. So really nice right there. Uh, Aqua Armor Ninja of the four uh, is probably the worst one to be fair, and that's a little bit of a pity because you know it's um, it's probably the one that I would have liked the best it's water but oh well. Next up we have a uh, Goblin Attack Force. Uh, this card attacks is changed to finish position at the end of the battle phase and its battle position cannot be changed until the end phase of your next turn. And yeah this guy is a level 4 monster meaning no tribute but it's 2300 attack and still defense so you know uh, yeah have fun with that. <laughs> uh, and also I found out the hard way as well I remember in the the LP that I'm playing at the moment, not in the LP, but in the game I'm LPing at the moment, the Yu-Gi-Oh game, that it, you can't change it to a touch during the next turn. 
So, you know, you have to wait a whole extra turn just to be able to put him in attack mode, which is really annoying, but I guess it is what it is. Next up, we have a Goblin Burger. When this card is normal summoned, you can special level 4 or lower monster from your hand, then change this card to defense position. So obviously it says 1 level 4 lower monster from your hand, and being that it's a warrior deck anyway, that it basically means the same thing, because it's literally any level 4. But it's a warrior type monster, and it's uh, really nice for Aegis players, Synchro players, probably Fusion players, I imagine, if you summon a Fusion substitute monster or something. Or a, a, fusion, a monster that can. a polarization monster or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, next up we have two copies of probably one of my more favourite monsters, that is Marauding Captain. When you open, okay, your opponent cannot target face up warrior type monsters for attacks except this one, which means obviously you can't, if you control two, you can't attack anything. With this card, it's normal summon, you can pass on level 4 or lower monster from your hand. So, obviously his protection works for only warriors, right, or, or face up warriors, meaning in this deck it works for any monster. Uh, and it doesn't matter what the level, rank, anything is, as long as it's a warrior type monster. Uh, but in this case, obviously, it's any monster. Uh, but the special summon does have to be a level 4 or lower monster, but it can be any monster as well. It doesn't have to be warrior type monster in the hand, or it doesn't have to be warrior type. You know, it can be anything, so you can summon anything level 4 or below, just not. I don't know why I'm, I don't even know why I'm explaining this deeply, because I'm pretty sure that it, a lot of people know what Morning Captain is enough as it is, you know, to the point where it's like, I don't really need to explain it too deeply. <sighs> Next up, we have uh, Masked Ninja Ibisu. Once per turn, if controller face up a ninja monster, other than a copy of this card, you can activate its effect. Return a number of your opponent's spell trap cards to the hand, equal to the number of ninja monsters you control. Also, every face up Go Go the Gallant Ninja you control can attack your opponent directly this turn. So, pretty self-explanatory effect, pretty much, just if you control another ninja. Obviously the effect is like, um, so if you have this guy and Aqua Armor Ninja out, and well if you have two copies of this guy out, and Aqua Armor Ninja, what well, one copy of Aqua Armor Ninja, um, all three ninjas count, even though you control two copies of this card, it's just that the effect requires you to control at least one ninja monster that isn't called this. So regardless of how many cards copies of this card you control, it, you just need to control one copy of a ninja that's not called this to activate the effect, but it takes all of them into consideration when it comes to giant trunading the opponent. Uh, and then obviously this go go the gallant ninja, all of them can attack directly, which unfortunately does not stack. So, uh, you can't control two copies of this in that Armor Ninja. I, you can you can activate both of their effects, and and uh, like if you control two copies of this and a third ninja that isn't this, you can activate both of their effects and return six spell trap cards you're putting control to the hand, or or four to six I should say, right? But the other effect of attacking directly does not stack because it's just attacking directly. It's not like you know. Which is a bit of a pity, but I guess it is a little, maybe overpowered, maybe, if it did attack twice for it, but, you know, it is what it is, so, there you go. I don't even think you need to retire anything if uh, you don't want to, or if you can't, but, you know. Not that you want to do it twice, because it doesn't stack, but anyway. Oh, oh, I mean, I guess, I guess, if anything, if you control one copy of that Go-Go Ninja, you activate the effect and then you, and then you summon another Go-Go Ninja later on in the same turn before you battle phase. I guess that second one can't attack directly, but I don't know, I'll have to look into that. Uh, anyway, Morpho Butter Spy is the next one. Another Ixies card. Another Ixies kind of archetype, if you will. Another anime card, actually, I should say. Uh, I think it was in the anime, anyway. I know the archetype was, at least, but maybe not this card. Uh, once per turn, when the battle position of an opponent's monster is changed, except during the damage step, you can target one of those monsters, it loses the fast attack and defense. So, obviously, this only works on the monster that swapped, and you can only uh, swap positions that you can only target one of them. But, it loses the fast attack and defense, so it's something, if you will. I guess if you activate final attack orders, maybe you can get in for a good attack or something. But it does work on your own monsters as well, I think. Hang on, let me have a look. 
No, opponent's monsters only, so if you swap your monsters position, you're fine. But it does stack as well, so if you control two of that card, your opponent's monster will lose two fast attack and defense. But if you had to find attack orders, just be wary that you can only target one of them, or one for each of that card you control. But you can target the same monster two or three times and have it lose that many attack points. Uh, next, up, next up, we have Necro Gardener. During your opponent's turn, you can banish this card from your graveyard, negate one attack from a monster your opponent controls. So it's basically Aqua Armor Ninja, but, but without the Archetype. But also without the archetype restriction, so it's kind of better, but kind of worse in a way. I think most people would prefer this card, to be honest. Well, yeah, most people would probably prefer this because obviously it's not archetype specific. But at the same time, armor guys might prefer the uh, armor guys, ninja guys might prefer this card. But I'm not entirely sure about that. Probably, maybe not, because like I call armor ninja obviously has the ninja archetype in it, so you know. And plus this guy has 600 attack and 13 of defense. How much was Aqua? Actually, 613 versus... 800, 1600, but level 4. So, I guess that's a pick your poison? I don't know. Next up we have... Uh, Noble Knight Drone. Which I think is a drone card, you know, the uh, like Saint Drone and Guardian Angel Drone. Except this card's a little weaker in terms of stats. If this card attacks, it loses 300 attack during damage step only. If this card in your possession is destroyed by your opponent's card, either by battle or by card effect, and sent to the graveyard, you can send one card from your hand to the graveyard and target a level 4 or lower warrior type monster, or any monster in this deck, in your graveyard, add it to your hand. So. I think you can tar target a level. F if you send a level four level warrior type monster from your hand to your graveyard for this kind of cast, I think you can get it back. I'm not sure though, but I'm, I imagine you can get this card back as well because obviously they're a level four level monster. So you know, but I guess that's also a picky poison. Next up, we have Noble Knight Medrot. Uh, this card is treated as a normal monster while facing on the field. Uh, it's not a Gemini because the next effect isn't a Gemini effect. Uh, while this card, while equipped with a normal arms quiz spell card, this card becomes an effect monster with this effect. So bear in mind that this card is only treated as a normal monster while it's facing on the field, and it's not equipped with a noble arms card. Therefore, and it, it doesn't have an effect unless it has a noble arms quiz spell equipped to it, which I think is kind of a cool concept. But at the same time, it's like it kind of needs to be a bit more. Than that to be able to really be good, especially with only 700 attack uh, and 1000 defense in level 4. So, anyway, the effect it gains while equipped with Noble Arms card is this card becomes dark and its level is increased by 1. Once per turn, if you control no other monsters, you can special summon one Noble Knight monster from your deck in face of defense mission, except another copy of this card. And if you do, destroy one equipped spell card you control. So, Obviously, you would maybe destroy, you know, you maybe you'd equip with, with something and then destroy the equipped spell card to get something out, but, you know, bearing in mind, I don't know too much about Noble Knight's plays either, so. Next up, we have Photon Slasher, a level 5 light monster. If a phase of Ixis monster is on the field, you can smash from this card from your hand and phase of defense position. So, you can control an Ixis monster and then just get this guy out for free, basically. And uh, it's not once per turn. The only downside is that this guy is summoned in defense position. Uh, so with that being the only downside, I would argue that this is a really good, uh, this is a really good, nice card for Ixie's decks, if you will. And it's good for like obviously, I mean it's obviously Photon, so it's obviously setting up for Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, and it's 2100 attack, so obviously really good for bringing them out. And uh, it's level five, so it's good for rank five place as well. So really nice card right there. Wish I had more copies of it. <laughs> Next up we have a Swallowtail Butterspy. When another monster you control affects bad damage to your opponent, target one, fa one face of monster your opponent controls, it loses attack equal to bad damage inflicted. So if you control two copies of this card, then they will work for each other, but not for themselves. If you control three copies, they will activate twice for each other, if you will. 
Uh, and then obviously if you control, and, and it's not eyesight specific, it's just as long as your monster inflicts damage. Um, it doesn't even have to be your attacking monster. It just has to be, you know, your opponent takes battle damage, your opponent loses attack, right? That's really all that happens. And so obviously if you attack with blue eyes, you'll still deal with that, well, maybe not blue eyes because this is a warrior deck. Guy the Fierce Knight, that's the next best one. <laughs> if you attack with a Guy the Fierce Knight, then obviously you're going to deal some nice damage, and then you would get, and it's no, not even any restriction, it doesn't even have to be a monster with a vassal less attack, or it has to be, you know, an Nexus monster specifically, or anything like that. It's just, as long as another monster you control and takes battle damage, and that's it. It just has to be a different monster from this one, even if it's another copy of this card. And, uh, but, the only the real, only real downside, if you will, I would say, that it's the bad damage that, it's, that it inflicts, which is what is reduced by, rather than the attack of the monster destroyed. So, for example, if your guy defense knight destroys a Curse of Dragon, for example, that's 300 damage, therefore, your one of your opponent's monsters will lose only 300 damage. Whereas, you know, so obviously that's the only down, real downside to it. Uh, but I would say that's a, if that's the only downside to it, that's a really nice effect, I think. At least for battle oriented effects anyway, as far as they can go, so, you know, take that as you will. Next up we have Trident Warrior. When it's called normal storage, you can special on level 3 monster from your hand. So obviously it brings out level 3. Uh, I can think of two monsters that this would be good to bring out with. Uh, uh, Shine Knight. And Morphtronic Scopin, I think. I think it's Morphtronic Scopin. Both of them have the effect where if they're in defense position, they are treated as level 4s. Therefore, you can obviously bring out uh, a rank 4 Ixies monster. Uh, or you can bring out a level 3 tuner and obviously bring out for synchro players. That's really all I know, but there you go, I guess. I guess it would be good for link plays as well, but I don't really pay attention to link plays nowadays, to be honest. Uh, too much because I've not really been able to keep up too well. But hey, it's a uh, might should be good because I know a lot of fan monsters are required because of the whole issue of tu uh, the tokens. But you know, next we have twin headed uh, twin headed twin sword marauder. Once per battle phase, if this card attacks defense machine monster, it can make a second attack in a row, and then also has piercing. So it's a really good attacker, basically. The only downside is got 600 attack, but I think that's I think that's, that's I think that's really good. I think it's a really good attack to have for this kind of monster because it's like I said, it's really good at attacking. So I can't really complain too much to be honest. Equip it with something and you're good. Uh, next up we have Upstart Golden Goblin. Uh, once per turn, you can send one trap card from your hand to your graveyard. Special on another four lower ninja monster from your deck. In face of defense position or face down defense position. So obviously it brings out ninjas at the cost of you sending traps. So any traps as well. It can be any trap. So you know it's nice for that reason. And it's in face up or face down defense position. So it's also uh, nice for that. And finally, our last effect monster. While we are kind of slow today. But it's been a while. Is a uh, wind up soldier. During your main phase, you can increase this card's level by one and attack by 400 until the end phase. This effect can only be used once while this card is fits from the field. So, for that one turn, you might want to. I mean, that, that increase can either be used uh, for rank 5 or for synchro if you win it, if you need that extra level, or even for Galaxy Eyes, Photon Dragon for the extra 400 attacks, it makes it 2200 now. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it's uh, I, I I know wind ups are like really good, but I never really wrapped my head around it because they all want while this card is facing the field kind of effect. So it's like it's always a bit iffy with me. But I guess kind of stuff like that that kind of stuff is a bit weird. But at the same time, it's like if we can make stuff like this really good, it's like why wouldn't you then think that uh, other stuff that is considered bad could have their use as well? You know, it's, it's a really uh, neat arch type in that way, I think, to be honest. Alright, next up is the spells. First of all, we have a Galaxy Wave. Each time you exit summon, it will take 5 damage to your opponent. 
So obviously, you know, you need a few weeks for the stack. I think rank upping, ranking up, does work as well as long as it says Ixie summon it. Because it's when you Ixie summon, not when you first summon an Ixie. So, you know, there's a, a, a distinction there. So, next up we have Magnum Shield or Magnum Shield. Equip only to a warrior time monster, or in this case, equip it to any of your monsters. Apply this effect depending on the master position. Attack position, it gains attack equal to its defense. Defense position, it gains defense equal to its attack. So basically, it becomes either a good war monster or a good attacker. But, you know, or, well, an even better attacker or even better defender. <laughs> Next up, we have a rare card. Rare card for me, anyway. It's MST, Mystical Space Typhoon. And I say it's rare because it's like it's rare that I ever go over this. Uh, but it, it's, I mean, I expect you to know what it does. It just targets a spell track on the field and destroy it. You know, nice uh, card right there. So, you know, it's, it is what it is. It's MST, so it's nice. And it's quick play as well, so you can activate the response or something. It's weird though, I've got it in this deck. I barely ever include it, but. Not because it's bad, not because I think it's bad, because it's actually really good, but I mean, I try and save it for deck. Any anyway, next up we have uh, Noble Arms, Arf Adventure. You can only control one face up, whatever this card is called. <laughs> Equip only to a warrior time monster, or any monster you control. Uh, well, it doesn't have to be any monster you control, but obviously it has to be warrior, but any monster you control is going to be warrior anyway. Once per turn, you can target one set card your opponent controls. The equipment monster's opponent loses the final attack, and if it does, destroy that target. This attack loss remains even if this card leaves the field, or the monster becomes unaffected by card effects. If this card, if this physical card in the field is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can target one physical warrior type noble knight to monster control and equip this tar card to that target. You can use the third once per turn. I've just realised as well, if your opponent controls no a warrior type monster, you can equip this card onto them. You know, I made them lose the attack <laughs> to MST something on the field. That's actually kind of cool. Yeah, because it's not only a warrior type monster you control, it's any warrior type monster, so... If anything, it's an, a warrior anti-support card in a way, <laughs> funnily enough. Alright, next up, it's funnily enough not a Noble Arms card, it is a Utopia card. Reverse Breaker. I could only to a Utopia monster which again can be your opponents. When the equipment monster declares an attack, target one spell trap card your opponent controls, destroy it. Your opponent cannot activate spell trap cards in response to this card activation. So, I think that means that they can activate a monster effect in response and then activate a spell trap card in response to their monster effect. Therefore, if you're tar destroying their draw of greed, they can activate a monster effect and then activate draw of greed to get them to draw the card and you basically get no target with this card. But it's kind of funny as well because you can equip this onto your opponent's Utopia, and now whenever they attack, they run the risk of destroying one of their inspired trap cards. So, you know, that's a kind of a neat card right there, in a way. Next up is a field spell card and kind of a cool one at that. <laughs> it's, it's so good. <laughs> I say cool because it's like, it's a nice field, and it's like, it's. 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 It's something, it's a very old one, so in all fairness it's kind of uh, bad to this day's, in this day's standards, but it's something. Increase the attack and defense of all Beast Warrior and Warrior type monsters by, wait for it, 200 points. <laughs> 200 points to all Beast Warriors and Warriors, I mean obviously all these monster warriors anyway, but... But I mean, I've included it in anyway because I've got a field spell and, and like I said, this is an old deck, so I might have to revamp this deck mm. at some point. I mean, at least I've got it on camera and whatnot, so it's that. Anyway, next up we have a Stoic Challenge, an equip spell. You only control one of this card. Equip only to a first up Ixion monster that has material. It gains extra attack for each material attached to a monster you control. And any battle damage your opponent takes from battles of it and their monster is and their monster is doubled. But its effects cannot be activated. That's went a little weirdly, but okay, I I'll try and understand it in a minute. 
During your presence end phase, send this card to the graveyard. When this card leaves the field, destroy the equipment monster. Whoa, okay, that's a bit... Okay, so I imagine that the 600 increase for attack, it says each material attached to a monster you control. So I'm, I'm guessing if you control three Ixis monsters, each with two materials each, that's six materials in total. So I'm guessing you gain 3600 attack. I'm guessing that because of the great downside of the effect that it has. Any damage your opponent takes from battles involving it, your monster, or well it, and which being your monster, and their monster is doubled, which is a pretty nice effect. Um, but its effect cannot be activated. The fact that says but its effect is negated implies to me that that your monster's effect is negated because it's like here's a positive effect, but here's a negative effect. That kind of thing. So that's what how it reads to me. Join your opponent and face send this card to the graveyard. When this card leaves the field, destroy the equipment monster. So yeah. The only way out of that really, the only real good way out of that really is a card like Mystic Walk that increases your life points by the tripping monster's attack. So obviously making this card make making this monster a good target for that if you've got a good boost on it. Or if you like rank it up into something. Really, that's really the only good I can see you know, the only good way of getting rid of it, if you will, because obviously if you MST it, then you're going to lose the monster anyway. Anyway. I wonder if it, like, counts if you equip it onto your opponent's monster or something, and then it still doubles the damage they take. <laughs> if, if you attack over it still. Anyway, next up is the A-Forces. All warrior-type monsters you control gain two attack for each warrior or spellcaster monster you control. So it's just warriors that gain the boost, but it's for every warrior and spellcast you control. <laughs> so it's a kind of an oddball one, but it's a nice one. It's uh you know, it obviously gives you I mean obviously in this deck it gives all your monster boost anyway, so it's really nice like that. Alright, next up is the trap card, starting with Armor Ninjutsu Art of Freezing. <laughs> when an opponent's monster clears an attack, if you control a face up ninja monster, you can flip this card face up. So you can flip it face up, it's not activating it, you're just flipping it face up. Negate that attack, it's kind of like a ninja in that way, if you will. And negate that attack and end the battle phase. So I guess in that case then it means, like, you only get that, it's, it's like negate attack, you only get, get it when you activate it. Once this card is face up on the field, monster you're running control cannot close the battle positions while you control a face up ninja monster. So. It's basically the gate attack if you control a face up ninja monster, uh, and then it becomes like uh, a lot down at bad positions while you control a ninja kind of thing. You know, but it, it's only the one the gate attack as well and whatnot, so. Yeah. Next up, we have Armor and Jitsu of Art of Rust Mist. When a monster is special summoned to opponents out of the field, if you control. So that means from either graveyard. If you control a physical ninja monster, half the attack of the special monster or monsters. And this is continuous as well, so as long as you control a ninja monster, all of their attacks are going to be really, not really though, but all of them are going to be halved. And it's not once per turn or anything, so if you control three copies of this and just one ninja, like that's like an eighth of their attack. So if you special a, a blue eyes white dragon, it's going to have 1500. 750 it's gonna have 375 attack so it's barely gonna have a tenth of its attack in that case I mean obviously but you know it's one eighth but anyway go off the tangent next up we have a desperate tag if you face up a tapestry monster you control this destroyed battle during the damage calculation you can reduce the best damage from this battle to zero as well as on one level four or lower warrior type monster from your hand at the end of the damage step so and that's not once per turn. So you can reduce the best damage to zero and just keep on bringing out more monsters from your hand. In either position as well. But it's got to be a tapishin. The, the destroyed monster has got to be a, in a tapishin. Uh, and obviously, I imagine you've got to take best damage as well. So. Well, obviously, you can't rely on being. On it being in defense position because it's got to be attached anyway, so it's kind of like you can't 
doesn't matter if it's an event when you take damage. Anyway, next up is Final Attack Orders. As long as the card remains placed on the field, all face monsters on the field are changed to attack position and their match position cannot be changed. So obviously good, really good for Goblin Attack Force. That's it, I think. But, you know, so this effectively negates Goblin Attack Force's effect and also there's also like other things as well. Like obviously Desperate Tag combined with it. Really nice, kind of gets you a bunch of monsters out, kinda, sorta. And lastly is Ixie's Soul. Target one Ixie's monster in either graveyard. All monsters you control, you currently control, gain attack equal to its rank times 200. Then you can shuffle it into the extra deck. This attack increase lasts until the end phase. So a nice boost for Ixie's monsters. And wow, it's already 40 minutes. I didn't realize how slow I was being. Ugh. Well, next up we have a uh, our extra deck, and by extra deck I mean the one fusion monster, which is Arcana Knight Joker. Uh, requires Queen's Knight, Jack's Knight, and King's Knight. It's kind of weird that it says Jack's Knight before King's Knight, but they're a warrior type monster. A fusion summon of this card can only be done conducted with the above materials. Once per turn, if this fatal card on the field is targeted by a spell card, trap card, or effect monster, and its effect. You can negate the effect by discarding the same kind of card, spell, trap, or monster card. So, nice, kind of, okay, negation kind of thing. Next up, we have the Synchro deck. Yes, we actually have a Synchro deck as well, so we actually have more. Catapult Warrior. <laughs> Once, so it's genetic materials, level 5. Once per turn, you can tribute a drunk monster. Inflict damage to opponent equal to its original attack of the troops monster. I'm sure I did. I not have Drink Synchron in this deck. I'm sure I did. You know what? It's probably in the extra deck, actually. Not in the side deck, I mean. Yeah, it's gotta be in the side deck. But hey, Catapult Warrior is right there, so. Uh, you know, it's, it is what it is. And finally, we have the Ixies deck. Where this is the real sort of like. Both of the deck, if you will. First off, we have Battling Boxer Lead Yoke. Requires two level four Battling Boxer monsters. In a Battling Boxer monster you control, or monsters you control, would restore a battle by card effect. You can attach one X material from this card instead of destroying one of those monsters. When X material is attached from this card, this card gets hit an attack. So, obviously, you start off with, with two, only two materials. Any materials attached. Um, so if you manage to equip another material to it, uh, any materials attached, uh, the detached will give it 800 extra attack. So generically speaking, you're looking at a 3800 attack point monster, but you can increase that even further with uh, more materials somehow if you manage to equip more onto them. Next up, we have uh, com Comics Hero King Arthur. And I think this guy has a CX's counterpart as well. Requires two level four warrior time monsters, so generic materials in this deck. If this card would be destroyed by battle, you can set one material from this card instead. When you do, it gains 500 attack, and if it does, it flips 500 damage to your opponent. So again, this guy is looking at 3400 attack points after his materials are detached, and again, you can obviously increase his attacking further by giving him more materials to detach. Uh, next up, the only limited edition card I kept in the deck because it's in the sleeve already. Is Heroic Champion Excalibur. I know I, I'm pretty sure I got this from the tin. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I got this from the tin that I actually had Excalibur on it. Uh, it requires two level four warriors. Once per turn, you can attack two materials from this card. This card's attack becomes double its original attack until your opponent's next end phase. So uh, I, that reads as its current attack becomes double its original attack. So therefore, it just becomes 4,000, generically speaking. If you, meaning, like, I think if you equip that pendant onto him and then uh, activate its effect to make it 4,000, then uh, it just becomes 4,000. It ignores the black pendant, I think. But if you equip the black pendant afterwards, then it has the black pendant attached as well, so it's 4,500 in that case. I pretty, that's how I'm pretty sure it works anyway, but maybe I'm wrong, I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to look into that, I guess. I'm pretty sure it's uh, 4 thousand regardless. Even, even if it's attack is zero for whatever reason, just instantly jumps up to 4,000. <laughs> Next up, maybe my favourite of the deck, uh, of the Ixies anyway, uh, Knight 
Papa Lebeprobitiv. Uh, three level fours. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card. This card gets free attack for each enemy material attached to a monster on the field. So again, I think I don't know if that means like um, just you pick a monster and you gain that many attack points, or you gain that many three hundreds, or if it's like like oh you got three monsters with three, two materials each. Um, and then, and then you detach from this card, so therefore it's a uh, 2 to 1, therefore a total of 5, therefore 1500 attack. I imagine you just pick the 1, but I'm not too sure to be honest. Uh, so I'll have to, again, I'll have to look into that, but you know, it's a nice card right there still. Next up, we have uh, number 12, Crimson Shadow Armor Ninja. So I rank 5, so at least that kind of uh, gives us a reason for Earth Armor Ninja being level 5 and Flame Armor Ninja. As well as a Wind Up Sword and other level 5s or other make believe level 5 monsters. I don't even think make believe is right. Anyway, anyway, you know materials. Uh, once per turn, during I have played this turn, you can detach material from this card. This turn, face up ninja monsters you control, but not sure by battle or card effects. So uh, it's a blanket protection for all ninja monsters. From destruction by battle card effects, including himself, so it's really nice in that way. Uh, next, we have uh, number 39, Utopia, who, despite being the rank lower, has better stats than uh, Crimson Ar Shadow Armor Ninja, but he does have a negative effect, though, to be fair, Utopia does. Uh, Genetic you know materials when any player's monster class attack, you can attach material, negate the attack. When this card is targeted for an attack, while it has no materials, destroy it. But hey, it's uh, something, right? Now this one, I'm not entirely sure whether or not I want to... Well, I'll just show it. Uh, number C, first on Utopia, Ray. Now, like I say, these are all in al alphabetical order. I'm not sure if I want to put number C, first on Utopia, Ray before or after number first on Utopia, uh, you know, the generic card, or not. Because technically, alphabetically speaking, if we ignore the numbers and whatever, then this card is first, because C comes before you. But at the same time, this is like number. This is like an evolution, so I'm not entirely sure which way I want to do it in. Uh, now that I say it out loud, I think I might want to put this card first, but I'm not entirely sure. I guess we'll see. Uh, anyway, so three level four lights. Uh, you can also exit from this card by using a number three hundred utopia you control as the X material. X material attached to it become material for this card. Uh, which, funny enough, by the way, if if you have a dark panther. Um, and the special dot panther, and uh, you, their effect says to copy the effect and name of the opponent's monster. Therefore, if you control, if if you copy the effect and name of Utopia, obviously you won't be able to use the effect because uh, dot panther is a, it's not an entity, so it's not going to have materials unless it changes the rules. But it doesn't have materials, so you can't use the effect. But you can then just have a one card Ixis evolution kind of thing, kind of like in the anime. So that's kind of cool uh, even though it's a dark monster as well <laughs> you know and despite the level as well it might I'm not sure if it's level 3 or 4 or whatever but you could have your dark panther be level 12 for whatever reason or level 1 for whatever reason and it would still just exit evolution into utopia ray <laughs> anyway for the actual effect you can attach one material from this card against 500 attack and one monster opponent controls loses a thousand attack until the end phase you must have a thousand life points or less to add for its effect and to resolve it, so pretty nice card right there. Uh, oh, I say pretty nice. It requires you to have low life points, but you know. Uh, finally, the final card of the deck is Starlege Paladynamo. Two level four light monsters. Once per turn, you can attach two materials from this card. Target one face emoji your opponent controls. It has to become zero, and if it does, its effect is negated. When this card, uh, your when this card you control is destroyed by your opponent's card effect, I have my battle card effect, and then to graveyard draw a card. So nice, draw your card, and plus you contribute it for Galaxy for drawing instead if you wanted to. So there you go. And uh, wow, I've kept you for quite a while this time around, haven't I? I'm <laughs> must be losing my touch a little bit because this deck feels smaller than normal, but I guess that's just it. And, uh,
This card's this deck's about 50 cards long. Well, more like 46 cards long, so I think it's actually a little shorter than normal. So I'll try and keep this short. Uh, but yeah, um, this deck, I might actually just dismantle this deck and start putting cards in other decks and whatnot. Uh, I'm not sure. Obviously, with the boss monster, I kind of want to put that in my nostalgia deck because obviously it's kind of nostalgic to me in a way. Uh, and then, you know, um, what else was there I wanted to talk about? I know there was something I wanted to talk about. Uh, let me just quickly go for the deck so it drops my memory. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. I can't remember what, what it was, but... Yeah, this is a nostalgia deck. No, I mean, it's not a nostalgia deck, it's a nostalgic deck. You know, nostalgic. So, like, it's not like a cord nostalgia deck, like, it's, like this, this is a warrior deck. I mean, like... Well, obviously, nostalgia decks. But I've got the, the more submission and stuff. Uh, point is, it's kind of nostalgic in a way to look back at this deck and think, like, yeah, this is the deck I built. Yeah, so it's kind of cool, if you will. It, it's cool in the sense that it's got a bit of sentimental value, that's what I mean. You know, whereas obviously normally it'd be like, yeah, it's not really that great of a deck, you know. Um, it's... It's something and it's obviously like, uh... Uh, I've, I don't know, to be honest. I don't know, it's um... It's something. It's definitely what it what it is. Uh, I mean, well, I say it's something. Just look how big the side deck is. Let me get it out for you. Just look how big the side deck is. <laughs> I don't even know how many cards this is, to be honest. But yeah, this is this was made back when um, we didn't really, like I said, I don't play competitively, so obviously, yeah, the side deck is huge. It's only supposed to be 15 cards big, but obviously the side deck is that big because, again, I, didn't, I wanted to keep all the cards together anyway. Because uh, these are all from my warrior deck kind of thing. But now I'm thinking, yeah, dismounting the deck and whatnot, and, you know, like, uh, uh, put, the other card, put the cards into the other decks. Obviously, I don't want to keep dismounting decks just to put them in other decks anyway, because, like, cause, like, the idea is, like, obviously, like, I wanted to have sort of, some sort of purpose, if you will, but obviously I'm going to have, like, there's going to be cards that are on that grate, if you will. So, you know, it's, um, I guess it's a bit of a, it's a thing, I guess. But obviously, like, um, I don't know, I, at least I've got it on camera. Maybe I'll rebuild, like, another warrior deck in the future and then replace this deck with it, if you will. You know, maybe I'll have, like, a new deck in the future, who knows. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe it'll be much better. Well, I imagine it'll be much better. Uh, it'll, it'll definitely be something. That's that's for sure. So you know. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this warrior deck, and hopefully, I have another one in the future. And I hope you look forward to the next ones. And yeah, that's going to be it. So thank you for watching, and I hope you have a really minky day.